Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And I'd like to welcome you to our bold and blooming Stamp TV kit product tour. I'm also going to show you an additional pattern paper pack and our brand new incentive stamp set. I have a couple of projects to show you featuring the new kit as well. Now this new kit is full of beautiful cardstock, pattern paper, stamps, and dies that will help you create beautiful cards for anyone on your list. Let's get started. First, just like all of our kits, the Bold and Blooming Stamp TV kit comes with this plastic storage box that will hold all of the components of your kit together so you can stamp along with me here at Stamp TV for weeks to come. And one thing I wanted to point out about these storage boxes, one of our Stamp TV members told me that our little ink cubes fit really nicely in these storage boxes. So if you have past kits and you have empty storage boxes, these make, these make great storage for your ink cubes. So let's get this kit open and we'll start with, hide the good stuff, we got to start with the cardstock. So we have 24 beautiful sheets of cardstock in this kit. First we've got three sheets of our turquoise sea, three sheets of wild dandelion, three sheets of fresh asparagus, three sheets of our heavy base weight white, three sheets of our black onyx, three sheets of our layering white, let's make that a little more visible, three sheets of our innocent pink, and three sheets of red hot. So look at that beautiful array of bright fun colors that just makes you feel like you're ready for spring. Now we have the bold and blooming pattern paper pack. This is a six by six pack and this also has 24 sheets. Now I always recommend keeping this cover sheet because you can cut this strip out and you can use that as a cute little border. You can also do that at the bottom and you can cut around this frame and then cut, punch out a plain circle and you can use that as a fun frame for a card project. So that's the cover sheet. Now you get three beautiful pieces of this black and floral design three of the turquoise sea chevron, three of this tiny heart design, three turquoise sea polka dot, and then you get the same floral pattern but in white instead of black, and the black gives you a bold striking look and the white is a little bit softer. And then you have black and white chevron, you have the heart pattern, but in an innocent pink background. And then you have this fun fresh asparagus polka dot pattern. So now you can see this color palette. It's just amazing and it's fun and bright and something that you'll enjoy using not just through spring, but also through summer. All right, so now let me scoop up all of this cardstock. And if you've never tried our cardstock, kits are a great way to give it a try because you get so many pieces and you can make so many cards out of it. Now, you also get one of our binder sheets. These have three um, holes here. You just have to punch these out. Sometimes they're already out. Sometimes you just have to punch them out. But these will store your clear stamps. You can put one set on the front and one set on the back. You can also use these for some of your rubber stamp sets if you like to keep your clear stamps on the uh, index sheet that comes with them. So these are a great storage tool and these fit perfectly in our binder boxes. And one of these comes in your kit. So for stamp sets, the first stamp set I'm going to show you is this beautiful stamp set called Bold and Blooming. And this set, honestly, I have been making so many cards with this, you're going to just, you're going to love the different things that you can do with this. So this initially was going to be just one big stamp that would fit pretty well on an A2 card front, but we decided to divide it up into two separate stamps. This way you can use them in different orientations, and I'll be showing you that today in some of my finished card projects. Then you've got these bold blooms, these bold and blooming flowers, 
you've got these pretty leaves and then these little delicate swirls that can be stamped directly onto your cardstock. Now the, the die set that goes with this um, will cut these three flowers and these two leaves. This one you're really not going to need a die for because this is going to be more for techniques and for just clean and simple big card fronts. And then look at the size of these greetings. I mean, this is an ink cube. Look how big these are. They're just huge. They'll fit right across the front of your A2 card. Um, they'll be bold enough to create very, very clean and simple cards. And the, the clean text is great no matter what, whether you're making a card for a girl or a guy. It doesn't matter. This clean text is always in style. So that's the Bold and Blooming stamp set. And this is going to be the one that I do a project for you tonight using this set. All right. The other fun stamp set, and I love this set. This is called Happy Spring. Now this set is just filled with cute little critters. There's a bunny, a sheep, a bird, and then these four adorable little flowers. And I just love doing little rows of them and coloring them with Copic markers or colored pencils or Zig markers and doing water coloring with them. This balloon will fit in the bunny's hand, so you can tie it right onto the bunny's hand using this little thing that's hanging over there. It'll fit right over his hand. It'll also fit into the mouth of the bird, and then you can kind of just attach it to the back of the sheep, almost like it's attached to his tail. If he had a tail, just maybe the little puff of um, wool there. And then it's got the branches and the different leaves and flowers so you can create spring cards, you can create fall cards if you just want to use leaves. And then all of the greetings here will fit inside this balloon. And there's a couple greetings that are also that are inside and outside greetings. So you have a little birdie told me it's your birthday. You make me happy when skies are gray. And you can use the clouds and make the front maybe kind of gray and then inside do the sunshine. And, um, and then happy spring, happy Easter, which is great because Easter is just around the corner. So if you're ready to make some Easter cards, you can, but you're not limited with this stamp set. You can make baby cards, birthday cards, spring cards, just about any kind of card you want. And also check some of the greetings that you have in your collection because they may fit perfectly in that balloon too. And of course, any other greeting will look great outside of the balloon. So I'm sure there's plenty of options in your stamp room that you can add to this set to make this one a fun one year round. Now I want to show you the dies that come. Now <laughs> right now all of our dies are downstairs being packaged in our warehouse, but I want to show you what the dies look like that come with this kit, which ones we have. So we have the bunny and the sheep and the bird, the balloon, all the flowers, the little branch, and then the flower and leaves. And then for the other set, we have the three larger flowers with the two leaves. So there are 17 dies in this collection. And these dies are pretty close to actual size, this printout. So you can see that's a huge set of dies that's going to come in this kit. So that is everything that comes in the Stamp TV kit. Now before we get to the first project, I want to show you our brand new incentive set. Look at this beautiful stamp set. This is called Through Thick and Thin, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so you can see it just a little closer. And I'm going to flip it over so you can see the actual size. Look how big this flower is. Seriously, once again, there's an ink cube. That flower is huge. Here is an A2 card. So you can see that is a ginormous flower and you're gonna be able to stamp that, emboss it, watercolor it, um, color it with Copics or colored pencils. And then with the separate leaf, you can make all kinds of bouquets. You can position them in different ways and add leaves so you have green in there. And then I love these greetings. You've been my friend through thick and thin. Who doesn't have a friend um, that that isn't the case? You want to send them a card like that. Best friends forever and thanks for always being there. So this is free with any $75 purchase. You need to make that purchase in one order and that has to be before 
any coupons if we have a coupon code down the line or something. It has to be $75 after, I should say, after any coupons or anything like that. So if you place a $75 order tonight, this stamp set is coming with your kit and your order. Okay, so now I want to show you something else that we did. This is a brand new pattern paper pack called Softly Spring. I really wanted to add an additional paper pack that wasn't quite so bold and blooming, something a little bit softer for spring so you had some options. So again, save this piece because you can cut those borders off and you can cut this frame out, but let me show you how pretty these are. First I'm going to show you the cardstock that I think looks best with it. I love the Moonlit Fog, the Ivory, the Dusty Rose, and the Innocent Pink with it. So let me put the innocent pink over here. There, you can see that palette right there. Okay, so you get this, you get 24 sheets, three sheets of this bold polka dot pattern that will go either with the innocent pink or the dusty rose. And then you have this fun chevron pattern. And this one, now you'll, the colors in here are a little bit more on the green side. But what, you've, what you'll find with our Moonlit Fog is if you put some green with it, it tends to look a little more green. If you put something bluer, it tends to look a little more blue. And if you just have it by itself, it tends to look a little gray. So it's a fun color because it really picks up the different hues. So we have this fun polka dot pattern. It's another one. Then we have this delicate wavy pattern, which is so pretty. And look how nice that looks like looks with the moonlit fog. Isn't that pretty together? That delicate wave. We also have these fun stars. I really like this because these are just soft little elements that can be used year round. So we have these fun stars. Then we have a little bit of a bolder wave pattern that also looks great with Moonlit Fog, Innocent Pink, and Dusty Rose. And we have this soft daisy floral pattern. And this one I really like with the Innocent Pink. I also love it with the Dusty Rose. And when you get it with the Dusty Rose in person, you'll be able to see the little center of the daisy really pops. And then the last pattern in this kit, in this uh, pattern paper pack, is this pretty heart pattern. And that goes really nicely with the Innocent Pink, with Ivory, with the Dusty Rose, and also with that Moonlit Fog. Even though it doesn't have any Moonlit Fog in it or any greens in it, it still looks really pretty with that uh, cardstock. So that is the color palette of the Softly Spring Paper Pack, and it is really a great one to have in your collection. It's really timeless. Even though it's soft, springy colors, it can be used any time of the year. Okay, so now that you've seen all of the components of the kit and our other fun new things that we have, let's get started on a card project. So I'm going to grab the Bold and Blooming stamp set, and we're going to start with this. Now, I want to show you a card that I made using this particular, let me get a piece of white under here so you can see it just a little bit better. So I want to show you a card that I made using this particular set of stamps. And this is the most traditional way that you can use this particular stamp set. These make great coloring cards. So if you have somebody who loves to color, you could just stamp these images and then give them the card and they can color it themselves. Or you can do all of the coloring if you love to color. Stamp up a whole bunch of them, grab your pencils or markers and take them with you and just sit and color them. So I made a card using these two stamps and the happy birthday to you. And I just colored it with my Copic markers, and, or you can use Spectrum Noir or Zig markers, colored pencils, anything. But it's just a fun, bright, cheerful card. And this would be the most traditional way to use it. But for my card project today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So let me grab my Misty first. And if you don't have a Misty, you can use a large acrylic block for this. The Misty does make it easier, that's for sure. So I actually have two Misties here today. I have my mini Misty here that I'm also going to use just so I don't have to pull the stamps out. Did you see I almost pinched my fingers here with these magnets? But I didn't. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of plain white cardstock 
that's cut to three and three quarter inches by four inches. So I have that there. And then I'm going to grab the two stamps that I want to use for my card. I'm just going to lay these on here. Now I've done this particular card so many times already and the stamps are very easy to clean. So if you have trouble getting pigment ink or Versamark ink off of your stamps, the best thing to do is to get a little bit of dishwashing detergent like um, Dawn or something like that, run the stamp under water, and then scrub it with a toothbrush and you'll get all of that pigment ink out of the cracks with no problem at all. Now I'm just positioning this where I want it and then I'm going to put my magnets on there. And then I'm going to pick that stamp, that collection of stamps up with the MISTI. Okay. All right. And since I had my cardstock positioned right in that corner, I know it's still going to be straight. Now I'm going to grab my embossing magic pad just to remove any oil or any static from the surface of the pad of the cardstock and I am going to use instead of Versamark for this technique I really like to use the Gina K white pigment ink and there's a couple reasons why I like to use this this is a lot of stamp right here it's huge and when you're inking it up with Versamark it's not always easy to make sure that you got every single part of this inked up and um, it's just a little bit easier to see once it's stamped on the cardstock because even though this is a very white, white pigment ink, when it's on the white Gina K cardstock, it has just a little bit of an off-white tint to it that you can see um, and makes it easier for me to see it. So I'm going to ink up these stamps really well with this pigment ink. Looks like I've got a little hair on there. Okay, so you can see now that is all nice and inky. And if you get any ink on your MISTI, you can always just take a little paper towel and wipe it off. All right, now I am going to stamp this image onto my piece of cardstock. And I'm going to press real well. And this is why I love the MISTI for these big stamps because. If for some reason I don't get this perfect, I can go back and stamp it again. But it gives me a lot of area to move my hands around, and I don't have to worry about that piece of cardstock shifting at all underneath. So it's going to give me a nice crisp image. So if you haven't yet tried a MISTI, I would recommend it. And if you only want to get one MISTI, I would recommend the original size because you can do a lot of movement with it but it's also a nice small size in your stamp room and it uh, it's great for card makers. They also have a memory misty which is great if you like to scrapbook or work on very large platforms of cardstock. Okay so now I have that all pressed down really well and <laughs> I'm going to peel that off and I'm not sure if you can see that at all, but you might be able to see the shine a little bit of that there. Okay, so I'm going to just push this aside for a second. And then I have a piece of cardstock here folded, and I'm going to grab the Gina K Designs White Fine Detail Powder. And I'm going to sprinkle that powder all over my images. Now, even though you, you can use clear powder, if you have clear powder, that is just fine to do. Um, but I really want this to be as white as white can be. I want it to be very bold, so I'm using the white powder. And now, you might be able to see that a little bit better. I'm just going to blow away any excess and put that aside. And let me get my powder out of the way by funneling it back into that jar. All right, and now after checking to make sure there's no strays, and I don't see any strays, if you do get any strays, you can use just a little paintbrush and brush them away, but I don't see any here. Well, actually, I do see a couple. Let me get those off. There we go. 
I am going to emboss it with my heat tool. I'm just going to give this a second to heat up. It makes your cardstock warp a little less if it's already hot when you get started. Okay, and here we go. This is such a fun stamp. You're going to have so much fun with this. I can't wait to show you all my cards I made, too. Right, I'm going to flip that around because I don't have my trusty clothespin with me. If you use a wooden clothespin, it makes it easier. You don't have to shift it around in your hands because you're less apt to burn yourself. Okay. So now let me show you what this looks like. You can probably see that a lot better now, that shine coming on there. And then I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper here. And I'm going to do a little bit of inking. So let me zoom in for you. And I'm going to do something different than I did for my sample so you can get another look. I'm going to use the lovely lavender and the ocean mist for this one. Okay, I also have another little piece of cardstock here and I'm just going to use that to block off the center. So let me just check my colors here. All right, that's pink. That looks like turquoise sea. I have my sponge daubers all over the place. Okay. So I have my ocean mist now. So I'm just going to lay that up against that border, and I'm going to start with some ocean mist. And I'm going to ink up my dauber, and then starting right in the center of the flowers, I'm going to start in a circular motion. And you can also use a post-it note here if that's easier for you. I'm just going to start right in here and add a little bit of color. like that. Then I'm going to switch over to my lovely lavender pad and ink that all up. Sponge dauber. And then I'm going to lightly work my way out and add some of this lovely lavender ink very softly. Very soft touch. Not hard at all. And if you see that you need to go out a little bit further to make sure that you pick up some of the detail, then do that. Okay. So now I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to do the other side the same exact way. I'm going to lay that on the border, because that border, it's, it, it doesn't matter if you lay it right on the border. It's not going to hurt the border because the border is embossed. And again with the ocean mist. just in the center. And um, you might be thinking, is the top stamp different than the bottom stamp? It is a little bit, not much, but a little bit different. And um, so it is just nice to have the two of them so you can stamp them all at once too. And I'm going out with that lovely lavender very, very lightly. And then you can look at that and make sure that the two colors look the same. If you need to add a little bit more, you certainly can. I'm going to add a little bit more of that lavender down here. I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay. So now there is my lavender and my ocean mist. So now I want to add my greeting onto this. So I can pick any greeting I want here because I've spaced it out nicely. And I'm going to grab my mini misty just so I don't have to touch those right now. And I'm going to lay this in here and put my magnets down. Okay. 
And also, it is kind of a good idea once you do this to grab a piece of paper towel and just wipe over the surface of that area because that, that'll get rid of any ink that's pooled on the top. And it does kind of make your embossing powder look a little bit whiter than and it won't get on anybody's fingers. All right. So now the next step is going to be to pick a greeting. So in my first card that I did, I used happy birthday to you. So how about if I use hello friend for this one? So I'm gonna position that where I want it and I can look right down onto my Misty and make sure that it's positioned well. And you might have other greetings you want to use in here, too. All of the scripty sayings will look good. And the nice thing about having the two separate stamps is you can tighten them up for smaller greetings, or you can even spread them out further for larger greetings or bigger cards. All right, so let's move that over. And now I'm going to pick that up. I just need to lean in if my head gets in the way. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pick that greeting up on my mini Misty. And then I'm gonna stamp this one using some of the VersaFine ink. I like the VersaFine ink with really big greetings. Either the VersaFine or the Gina K Black Onyx ink works really well. But with greetings, the VersaFine, it just, it's just so spot on. Um, it doesn't feather at all and I really like that. There we go. Hello, friend. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So now I'm going to put this aside for a second. I want to show you something fun. Some of uh, I know a lot of you have already purchased the Gina K Double Scrubber. What you may not know is in our Double Scrubber, this part comes out. You can throw this in your dishwasher to wash it. But one thing that I like to do when I'm working with my Misty Let's say I want to change the color of my greeting. I'll just spray a little of the Gina K Stamp Cleaner. This is our version of Ultra Clean. And I'll just scrub right over my greeting. And then I'll just move it up to the dry part and just dry it off. And this way you don't even have to take your stamp off of your Misty. It's ready to go for the next card. It will also work very well on the pigment ink. But... Once I'm finally done using the pigment ink, I will definitely take it into the uh, kitchen and do the Dawn dishwashing detergent thing. So we'll just clean this up now, though, because I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something else. But you can see how nice that cleans everything up, and that makes it easy. You can use baby wipes too, but sometimes I buy the wrong ones. I, I think the mom in me wants to buy the really super soft ones and they're kind of linty. So, okay, so now that I've cleaned that, I'm just gonna move my Misty out of the way. And I can feel my magnets all stuck to the bottom here. Okay, and now I'm gonna assemble this card. So I'm going to grab a piece of black onyx cardstock, and I'm going to layer those two pieces together using some adhesive. There we go. And then that whole panel is going to go on to a turquoise C card base. Now, of course, you can put this on any color you want because the colors that I used are a little bit outside of the kit colors for this particular one. Um, so, but I'm going to put it on the turquoise C because I think the ocean mist is a very nice complementary color to turquoise C. It's a much lighter version, but it looks very pretty together. So there is my finished card, and you can see how fun that is. Now I did another one using turquoise C and jelly bean green, and you can see how pretty that one is together too. That's very bright and fun, makes a nice birthday card. You can also use just one side of this, these particular stamps across the flap of your envelope and make envelopes to match. So you can 
um, emboss them and sponge them and then they'll match perfectly with your cards. So that is how to use the two stamps together, kind of the way it's situated on the stamp sheet when you get your stamps. So, okay, now I want to show you one more thing. I have to show you something else. I know this video is a little longer than some of my other ones, but hey, why not, right? Okay, so I am going to put a piece of cardstock in here, and then I am going to reposition my stamps. I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to overlap that just a little bit. And then, if this one does not fit, it might fit, no, it doesn't fit. So I'm going to do one at a time here. And you can use the same one, or you can change it up. So I'm going to, let me wipe this stamp cleaner off my Misty, and I'm going to pick up the stamp. And then I'm going to use the Embossing Magic Pad once again. Get my magnets on there although I think I need an extra magnet. Okay, now I'm going to ink up this stamp again with white ink. And I'm going to stamp that on the side. And you can put a piece of protective paper underneath the grid paper, or um, I know some of you have laminated your grid paper. You can also put a piece of scrap paper under there so you don't get it on your foam. I'll just probably wash my foam afterwards because I always forget to put grid paper down. Okay, so now I have that piece done, and I'm going to emboss that one first. So let me grab my embossing powder, and I'm going to emboss this side first. This way it's not wet anymore. I don't have to think about it. It's all done, and it'll help me see it a little bit better. And make sure there's no little frays anywhere or strays. Get this out of the way. And then I'll emboss this piece, this side. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to lay that back in place with my magnets. And I'm going to use the other stamp so I can get that off of there. And by, having, by using the other stamp, it's a clean stamp, so you don't have to worry while you're trying to position it if it's transferring any ink. So let's put that one right about there. Okay. And then we'll pick that up with the Misty. And ink that all up using that white pigment ink again. This is going to be a very pretty element on your card. And we will do the same thing here. Okay. Now, I'll get my Misty out of the way. I'm going to add some embossing powder to that area. There we go. And now I'm going to ink this part up. Well, I have a few extra pieces that I don't want there. Okay.
All right. And now that is done. So now I am going to grab that scrap piece of paper again and zoom in a bit. And we're going to find a different color to do on this one. So I will use some of, I'll go brighter this time. I'll do the turquoise C. Maybe I'll do something a little bit different. Let's do apple mint this time. Apple mint will be fun. Okay, so I'm going to use some apple mint ink and ink that up real well. And then I'm just going to bring this out just a little bit. So starting heavy in the center and then getting very light as I work my way out. And it's okay to just, you know, keep going with lighter, with a lighter touch than to kind of go too heavy because you can't really take it back once you've added the ink. So if it's not dark enough, you can keep doing that circular motion until you've added more color. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side over here. and then get lighter as I go out. We'll go back on this side and add a little bit more. You can keep adding if you feel like it needs some more brightness. And then if you happen to get a little edge like I got here, just take your paper trimmer and trim that off and you don't have to worry about that. And then again, using the mini Misty, I will find the right spot to add a greeting. And I'll finish up this card when I'm done and I'll trim that off and I'll post that later on this week on my Instagram, you'll be able to see that and some of the other ones. So for this one, let's do the happy birthday to you because that is a card I always need. So we'll position that properly. And pick it up with the mini Misty. And we'll ink that up using some of the VersaFine ink And again, if you get it anywhere else, you can just wipe it right off before you stamp. And stamp. Ooh, it's nice to have the misty and have everything in place. Okay, so there's my happy birthday to you in apple mint. Now let me show you a card I made using this layout, but I did it with Innocent Pink. Isn't that pretty? I just love that one. I love the Innocent Pink. And that's one of the cardstock colors that's in the kit. And then I want to show you one more that I made. I'm not going to do the technique, but all I did was I stamped this one. I did one and then I just picked it up again and stamped it a little bit over. And I colored that one with a little ocean mist and lovely lavender. So this is a whole bunch of different layouts that you can do. You can do the, the, the two, like one on the side and one on the top. You can do a border across the bottom. You can do the full-blown, well, I can't even get them all in the in the scene here. You can do the, the full-blown card front look like I did with this one. And here's a different color combination of that same one. Maybe I'll hide that one there so you can see all the layouts there. And then, of course, you can use that same exact stamp with a greeting and do the more traditional look. So those are a bunch of finished cards that you can get started on right away when you get your brand new Bold and Blooming Stamp TV kit. 
I hope you've enjoyed tonight's new Stamp TV Kit product tour video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more videos featuring the new Bold and Blooming Stamp TV Kit, and thanks so much for watching.